In today's video, we're going to be comparing the Ridgeback and the Cocker Spaniel. Both of these fantastic breeds were bred to work as hunting dogs, but in different ways. So let's see how they compare head to head. Welcome back to the Fenrir Ridgeback Show. My name is Rachel and I'm the co-founder here at FenrirK9Leaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about Ridgebacks, then how to become a high-level canine leader who can raise a perfect Ridgeback companion. So if you're a lifelong Ridgeback lover, thinking about getting one or just starting your journey with your new Ridgeback, then this channel is for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Ridge Backup video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll take a deeper look at the main differences between these two breeds. Let's dig right into each breed's history to get a better look at how our cherished modern canines first developed. The Ridgeback is also known as the African Lion Dog and is a descendant from the Hottentod Ridge Dog that was native to South Africa. These dogs were used by native South Africans to hunt large game and to protect their homes. When the German and Dutch settlers travelled there in the 16th and 17th centuries, they took a variety of large hunting breeds along with them such as Great Danes, Mastiffs and Bloodhounds. They were impressed with the native dog's hunting abilities and began to breed them with their own dogs that they had brought over, and the Ridgeback was born. Today they're kept as companion and family dogs. The Cocker Spaniel is thought to have originated in Spain because their name, Spaniel, could possibly be derived from their place of origin. Though some argue that the name could have come from a French phrase. But regardless of where these canines are from, we know for a fact that they are descendants of one of the oldest breeds around, the Spaniel. There are records of these dogs back as far as the 14th and 15th centuries, though many believe that the Spaniel appeared in England far before that. Spaniels were originally bred to flush out game and drive them towards the hunter, but over time they started to be used as gun dogs instead. Cocker Spaniels were not recognised as a breed until around 1885, due to the fact that Springer Spaniels could birth multiple types of Spaniel in a litter. Today these dogs are still popular as gun dogs, but they also participate in shows. Moving on to appearance, these dogs have absolutely nothing in common. The Ridgeback is larger than the Cocker Spaniel, standing between 61 and 69 centimetres and weighing between 32 to 36 kilograms, compared with the Cocker Spaniel at 38 to 41 centimetres, with a weight between 13 to 14.5 kilograms. The Ridgeback also sports a short, close and glossy coat that's nothing like the Cocker Spaniels. They have a long coat and their grooming needs are also very different. The Ridgeback short coat allows for minimal upkeep. A brushing once a week and a wipe down with a chamois leather every couple of days will keep their coat more than healthy. Cocker Spaniels will need brushing multiple times a day to keep their fur from tangling and matting. Cocker Spaniels will also benefit from a quick brush after a walk as their long hair picks up debris and it's also recommended that they get professionally groomed every two to three months. Regular bathing may be part of grooming for either breed depending on how often they go out and what they get into. You'll need to make sure that you don't bathe the Cocker Spaniel too often though. It can change the balance of natural oils in their coat and lead to allergies. Hey guys, if you're having any kind of difficulty with your dogs and you wish their behaviour would be as good as my perfect canine companions here are today, I've got the perfect thing for you. I've got a completely free course called The Principles of Canine Behaviour. I created it. It's all about the things that I've learned from my experience and skill set as working as a professional canine behaviourist. There's tons in there about how you can modify bad behaviours and turn them into dream behaviours to have amazing dogs just like these. So if you are interested, it is completely free. There'll be a link in the description box below. I can't wait to see you over there. This moves us into trainability for each breed. The Ridgeback is highly intelligent but with a very strong will and stubborn nature, so it's extremely important to start their training and socialisation very early. They need it to develop into a well-rounded adult and it's also important they have a calm, consistent leader who is patient and understanding. They'll need positive reinforcement and a diverse training regimen will keep them more interested in the activity. It's important the dog understands who their leader is to help avoid unwanted behaviour because puppies will always test boundaries. This is in contrast to the Cocker Spaniel. This dog is also extremely smart but often lacks that stubborn streak found in other working dogs. They absolutely love to please and are always ready to learn new things. 
This makes for a highly trainable canine, but as always, it's best to start training as early as possible to lay a good foundation for the dog, and consistent training is the key to success. Even housebreaking a Cocker Spaniel is said to be easier because the breed tends to hang on to every word and will quickly learn where they're supposed to go. Both of these dogs can make wonderful additions to the family. Ridgebacks are known to be good around children but would do better in a household with older children who know how to behave around dogs. Any sudden movements or loud noises may cause the Ridgeback to act because of either their prey drive or in defence if they think a family member is in trouble, and this can lead to accidents. They also may not do well with small animals such as cats due to their prey drive, but they normally get along well with other dogs. Meanwhile, the Cocker Spaniel has earned itself a reputation as a wonderful family pet because they're so patient. Their patient nature makes them tolerant of children of any age. This dog is also extremely social by nature and they normally get along well with other dogs and family pets such as cats, but it's still advised to supervise any pet introductions just in case. You wouldn't want it to become more stressful than it may already be. Both of these breeds are very active and as such will need an active leader in their lives to make sure that they have enough of an energy outlet. But either would make a fine family addition. Those with younger kids may prefer the Cocker Spaniel as they're more tolerant of smaller children and their behaviours, while a family with older kids could happily enjoy either of these canine companions in their home. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below, and don't forget that if you're new here to make sure that you subscribe. We have three dedicated Ridgeback videos coming here every week, so I can't wait to talk to you again soon on the next episode of the Fenrir Ridgeback Show.